PZ2 is a game built around time. As a children's game though, there is a much larger focus put on theming, even within the times the game visits. Ancient Egypt is more so based on the fantastical religion, and pyramids, with zombies like pharaohs, camels to represent hieroglyphics, Ra, Tomb Raider, and even an explorer. This results in obvious questions. I mean, why is an explorer in the same time as the ancient Egyptians whose ruins they, well, explore? Clearly, the fact they have to go to such a lows in the first version of the game is a clear sign that ps 2s time travel theme was far looser than one would expect. But trust me, Wild West has the worst zombie for my time travel immersion. By a long shot. Among an array of zombies I can understand, one alone stands above the rest. One that makes no sense. An impossible being. One that imposes fear into anyone nearby. The simple and terrifying Chicken Wrangler. Now this may come as a shock to you, but Chicken Wrangler is only carrying a pair of chickens. Yet, when he uses his ability, he somehow summons in far, far more than two chickens. Far more than he should reasonably even be able to carry. Now this poses a clear problem, because this is clearly impossible. But, as an unexplainable design choice is inherently terrible, it must be grounded in reality somewhere. Thus, I ask the question. What sort of dark powers does Chicken Wrangler contain? The answer might surprise you. So, failing that, let's instead just talk about my favourite world in the game, Wild West. When I first played Wild West, I actually really didn't like it, but due to my further experiences at this point, God, this world is arguably the best designed one in the entire game. At least on a purely mechanical level, it's one of the most fun and distinct worlds in the entire game, showing to me what these worlds should be, and what they often are not. Now with that said, let's start with a bit of a change. You see, I'm going to cover the most damning reason that this world actually sucks. Yes I know, how revolutionary, but I do seriously think it's important to clarify before we get into this proper. You probably don't like Wild West, and I can take a wild guess as to why. Pun very intended. Okay, so early PZ2 was very different. You see, each world only had 10 levels. However, they also had a whole bunch of side levels that featured big gimmicks, such as Locked and Loaded, the minigame levels, last stands, and so on. In fact, the normal levels didn't even have objectives naturally. They only had them on a replay where the levels would otherwise be exactly the same. When they changed the worlds to be 25 levels each, they had to do a lot of tinkering to get it to work. They didn't have time to make 15 whole new levels for each world, so instead they just put the old ones in. This includes these pre-1.7 objective levels. You know, the ones where the level was exactly the same, except for the objective? Yeah, uh, these objectives used to be technically optional. You could skip the ones you didn't want to do, and do other levels instead. Now, after the update, they are all mandatory. Not only are they mandatory, they are essentially reruns of old levels, often just with a new objective slapped on top. Now, you may not notice this in normal play, but you can definitely feel this in the way objectives work. Out of every world, Wild West uses objectives, arguably the worst in the entire game. Don't Lose Two Plants is the best example of this in my mind. This objective appears twice, and worse, reappears in 23 as Don't Lose More Than One Plant. These levels aren't hard, but god these levels aren't fun. You don't get to build up the defense that PvZ games are well known for either, as most of these levels are essentially retreads of levels 1 and 2, over and over. It's not fun, it's not interesting, it's a waste of time. Now with that said, I want to emphasize a fact here. I play PZ2 mods. Because of this, I have experienced a lot of these worlds with elements tweaked. One of those elements, almost universally, are the levels themselves, and being able to play Wild West where people are actively trying to make the most out of its mechanics 
certainly helps a ton in making the world more enjoyable. It gives more room for the mechanics to breathe, and while other worlds don't tend to change as much, Wild West really changes. Mechanics unfold into great synergies. Objectives bring out tons of these zombies compared to others. Just let me get started with the main gimmick of a world, and let us work backwards. Let's start with the most controversial element in the world, the minecarts. Minecarts are the central mechanic of Wild West, and are relatively complicated. At the start of a the level, there will be a bunch of rails on the lawn, and usually minecarts are not connected to them. These minecarts have to be dragged, yes, dragged, with your fingers or mouse to move them. And they sure do move. Across lanes, even. You can even put a plant on these minecarts, and they will travel with them. However, you can't put plants on the rails themselves. This limits your planning space quite a bit in exchange for a stronger single tile that a plant can make better usage of, if you play well enough. This mechanic is one of my favourite mechanics in the entire game, and honestly, probably the entire franchise. And for one core reason, it redefines the game and the way the player has to build their defence. In any other world, the player doesn't really have their ability to consistently defend throughout the entire game under threat. With so many tiles unusable of minecarts, and your firepower bow lane often being so variable, you'll often find that the late game can be harder than other worlds. On the contrary, the early game becomes much easier. A huge flip from the usual dynamic here. What's more, this is an active mechanic. It doesn't just happen, the player has to actively interact with it. It doesn't do much alone. You can leave it in one place the entire game if you want, but it won't just suddenly pop up to screw you over. Unlike other mechanics such as Dark Ages Graves, Jurassic March's Dinosaurs, or Modern Day's Portals. Minecarts are there from the start, and can remain relevant for most of a level. That's what a mechanic should be. It also just interacts super well with plants in general. Plants like Peapod were introduced in this world, and fit in perfectly with these minecarts making single tiles with a huge amount of sun and resources piled into them, and giving you the ability to fully maneuver these huge units in a game where this is usually an expensive ability for a plant to have. And yet, this ability doesn't feel overpowered because the drawback is so massive, but this ability becomes something that in harder levels you need to interact with and get good with, and I absolutely love this. Some other fun elements of minecarts include the inherent variety they provide as a gimmick. Pretty much every world has a gimmick that isn't super global, but generally the mechanics have a more global, consistent effect. Graves come to mind here as an example. Yes, they can be super relevant to a level, but more often than not have this broader, there are graves here, effect. Meanwhile, minecarts don't really tend to sell into this. Even just two minecarts forces some diversity in how the play has to react to them. Ultimately, though, I think the biggest strength it has is the way it interacts with the other zombies in the world. It's not ham-fisted or direct, say, a zombie that spawns minecarts, or a zombie that has an ability that triggers with them. Instead, it's much more subtle in how it synergizes with the others. But to understand that, I need to talk about the other zombies a little, don't I? Wild West is blessed with the privilege of being an earlier world. This gives it a huge advantage, if you ignore the levels, because the earlier worlds almost universally had more zombies than later worlds. This helps pretty much any world out by a ton, as having more zombies inherently means that the levels can have a wider variety. And mostly zombies are great at this, being incredibly strong from a mechanical standpoint. Unfortunately, Moses and all. Poncho Zombie, Kinda just sucks. Poncho Zombie is a very simple zombie. It has a poncho that will drop off as it takes damage. When it drops off, it will reveal either a grate or nothing beneath. If there is a metal grate, the zombie now has roughly the HP of a buckethead. If there is nothing, then it's probably already dead before you can realize it. This is just sorta of there, I guess. The issue is that the plants who are most likely to struggle with the sun reveal of a grate are the same plants that immediately knock it off, by being area effects. Most other plants are nearly as concerned, 
even with your defense being weaker due to limited space. In reality, the kinds of plans that hit zombies one at a time tend to be reasonably okay for dealing with Bucketheads, as that is sort of the entire point of them. As a result, Poncho just sort of does nothing, and is extremely meh as a threat. Now the others aren't exactly like this, but let's start with Prospector. Prospector is a light zombie, showing up a lot more than other special zombies, and being relatively simple. It moves forward for a bit, usually about two tiles, then will explode, jumping straight to your house. Thankfully, it twists around mid-air and thus starts moving backwards. The player unlocks Blit P almost immediately to help deal with Prospector, and it can also be stopped by chilling or freezing it before it gets too far, as this will extinguish his dynamite. This works incredibly well for me because of the way the minecarts work here. You can use minecarts to move plants out of the way of prospectors coming from behind, and you can use minecarts to move split peas into the lanes they need to be to clear them. But more notably, these minecarts on rails limit space. While one split pea per lane will deal with most prospectors, that is a costly investment for space. Without minecarts, this would be relatively simple, but with them you need to be more wary of your space. To a point that you may want to run the level without split pea or the like, instead using instas and chill to try to stop them, as unreliable as they may be. And that's just good fun to pull off. Pianist zombies are pretty distinct. They move extremely slowly and only have a bit more HP than a conet, but make up for it with an incredibly strong ability. They will cause all basics and the armored variants to swap lanes constantly for as long as he lives. This allows them to squeeze into places they really don't want to be, and can really screw up your early game plans if the zombies keep moving out of your lanes with plants into your mostly empty lanes. They can be a real issue if you let them be. Obviously, these zombies work well with minecarts. You get to move your plants across lanes. Now the enemy can do the same. They also, again, work well due to the limited space. Zombies being able to move across lanes is a lot more dangerous when inherently your lanes can't all be equal, and this can very quickly cause utter chaos. Especially when a buckethead stops being instable easily, which has been a huge issue for me on several occasions. Chicken Wrangler, finally got around to talk about him, huh, also falls into the whole space thing. When he touches a plant or takes a certain amount of damage, he will spawn an absolute horde of chickens. How many? God knows, but it's a lot and it doesn't exactly matter. These will absolutely shred plants if you give them the chance to. Though the chickens themselves are fast, they are still extremely fragile, so most forms of AoE can deal with them. Chicken Wranglers have a lot of counters the game provides, but can be a huge problem regardless. They do an absurd amount of damage, and are one of the most dangerous zombies if you don't bring the counters, capable of annihilating up to 3 lanes at once. It's necessary to bring a counter of at least some kind, but unlike other zombies such as Prospector, the list of counters is pretty high. Lightning Reed is also an option, though it requires high numbers. However, despite the high list of counters, they all still take one thing. Space. Unless you want to minecart micro them, of course, but generally it'll take space to reliably answer Chicken Wrangler, or using those plans anyways for your main offense. Weirdly, as I type this, I realize that you can actually argue Chicken Wrangler and Jester are notably similar. Huh. Anyways, the final big zombie in the world is Bull Zombie, who is actually a robot. Not relevant. It has the HP of a Buckethead, but doesn't move like one. Instead, it will get angry and charge at you at full speed. When it reaches a plant, it will stop, flinging an imp further in, then move normally for the rest of the time it's alive. Bull Zombies are countered by Tolnets, which will block the imp throw and stall out the Bull Zombie itself. However, again, space. You already have three Tiles per lane dedicated to Air of Effect, Split Peas, and just your normal attackers, in addition to your Sun Produce and so forth. However, remember how the Minecarts work? I can have Tiles without plans being plantable? Yeah, Bulls like this. Unless you, of course, start moving Minecarts to block them as they charge. They don't charge immediately, remember, so you can move a toilet in order to block them. Or you can move a minecart to block several balls all at once, if you're really interested in being cool and awesome. This also develops Gargantuas into a little bit of a silly position. Because they smash plants slowly, you can keep moving a minecart and keep stalling them eternally if you keep a pan up. 
It's not as strong as you think, though, as it takes some real effort to minecast all gogs this way while still managing everything else in the field, especially when there are several. If you can pull it off, you generally are strong enough gogs anytime soon regardless, so it doesn't exactly make them irrelevant, just a skill to practice. As you can see, I think Wild West does most things right. The only thing that the world doesn't have is good level design, which is incredibly unfortunate and ruins the world in vanilla. But the world's cores are still there, so you can't exactly just ignore it, can you? Actually, something you can bring up are the plants. The Wild West plants are... fine, I guess. Truthfully, I think Wild West is up there for one of the weakest set of plants in the entire game. Not in terms of power, god no. Wintermelon's unlocked in Wild West and is one of the most broken plants in the entire game, but I mean in terms of being interesting. It's still absolutely fine, really. It's just weaker than some other worlds, for sure. Let's start with Split Pea and Lightning Greed. Arguably some of the worst plants in the game. Split Pea is essentially only useful when zombies allow it to be, as its only use is to attack zombies in the back. The zombies have to get themselves in the back somehow. They don't just naturally appear there after all. Instead, only zombies like prospectors do. Yes, technically in Jurassic Marsh, Split Pea can shoot at pterodactyl targets, but to be blunt, they aren't killing buggers quickly enough. You can place mobile split peas at a technicality, but at that point you'd rather just use anything else, often including just using instas instead. Lightning Raid is just an insanely easy plan to use, and I think is very easy to overrate as a result. When you get better at the game, there is practically never a real reason to use it, as it lacks basically everything a strong plant needs. When you get into Big Red Beach or Jurassic Marsh, they simply lack damage and reliability. They only really have a lot of pierce, meaning they can help with Wild West, but even then you can just run Snapdragon in most cases. It's just not in a good spot, and for someone like me, Reed is rarely ever worth it. Unless you feel like ungabunging through some levels. At which point, sure, I guess. The rest of the plants are a bit more interesting. Chili Bean comes to mind especially. Beyond the funny fart joke, it can kill a zombie instantly, of most kinds, and stuns the rest of the zombies in the lane for about 8 seconds. Considering its low cost, fast recharge time, and overall utility of its stun, it's actually quite a bit better than you'd think. It's not the best unit in the game by any means, but it's definitely one that is easy to overlook very often, especially considering the fart joke. I consider using it instead of Potato Mine for your early game insta, but later game other options outperform quite comfortably, such as Shadow Shroom and Primal Potato Mine. Melon Pulse isn't exactly interesting, but is sure here. It's your standard damage deal with little else to really talk about. It's better than other similarly priced plants due to its splash damage, with its direct damage being broadly similar to a repeater. It's not exactly terrible, but it gets out class easily. Usable and decent, but not a huge deal. Tolnut is also equally simple, but is one of the highest HP walls in the entire game, and worth keeping an eye on. Unlike Melon Pult, it's not exactly outclassed by simple walls, but complicated plants just charge guard. The only real exception being Primal Walnut, but Tolnut has extra abilities Primal does not mostly including the ability to block flying enemies such as bugs, and enemies such as bulls from fleeing themselves too far. It's not terrible, but generally it's another plant that falls off pretty hard late game, where other plants are classic. Peapod is the best plant in Wild West. Not because it's a great plant, but because it's my personal favourite, and that means a lot apparently. Unlike the other plants, it really benefits from minecarts, costing 125 sun for 1p of damage, but being able to stack up to 5. This makes it a very unique plant to play, and pretty universally solid. It's fairly cheap, useful in a wide variety of situations. Very viable plant overall, if you can use it. Not as viable as Wintermelon, though. In competition to the strongest plant in the game, Wintermelon is absurdly broken. It's got solid damage, usage of a strong condition, and is in a game where sudden cards can easily be worked around with solid play and good insta usage. I really don't need to kill this thing all too much, 
If you know this thing is strong, you know it's strong, and I don't need to explain it. If you don't, I can't really explain it in 100 words or less, so I shall just carry on. These plants are definitely on the weaker end, as said, but honestly, I don't find them to be a huge issue. Truth be told, I don't think where plants are unlocked matters all too much. The order of worlds and how they are unlocked has changed a whole lot constantly. I'd say it'd be best to treat plants as, well, plants, with where they are unlocked being merely an aspect of a plant as opposed to the full story. And to be blunt, it's not nearly as bad as Neon Mixtape Tour. Nothing can be as bad as Neon Mixtape Tour. So now I've said what I think, I think it's fairly obvious that I like a lot of this world. And as weird as it sounds, Wild West is probably the world I look forward to the most when I boot up a mod for the first time. It's the best way for a mod to me to show me what it's all about, and just how much it can truly understand what makes people do fun, and how to use the tools the game gives to their fullest. In other words, if you want me to like your mod, make a good Wild West. That's all you truly need. Either way, sorry that this video took a while. In between my week break and me being busy working on a separate video, this video was made because I realised that video would take a bit more effort to work on, so just hold on to that. Otherwise, I should close this video out. Thanks for watching, subscribe, blah blah blah. I need to go learn how to shield better. This has been Creeps, and have a good one.